As you know, on the way to Damascus, um, Saul, the Pharisee, uh, was struck down and blinded. Um, and he had been persecuting the early Christians. And after this uh, epiphany on the way to Damascus, St. Paul, uh, he, he said that he supported Jesus and that he supported the Christians and what they were doing. Now, is there any lesson for General Peter Cosgrove <laughs> in the epiphany of St. Paul on his way to Damascus? Well, I think if he uh, read the Gospels closely, he would see that uh, Jesus is calling to renounce violence, and killing, and to have a conversion experience. Take up uh, his cross and put down the sword. So I think that would be a great opportunity for myself. It would be a great conversion. Is it lightly or, or well, not? Not is it lightly? Um, what, what could he have done practically when he was called up by the Howard government to participate in the invasion of Iraq? What were the options open to him morally? Well, the only option morally as a practicing Catholic was to resign. He had no other option. And he refused that and betrayed his faith, betrayed the church's just war teaching, and. Uh, Put all his allegiance in the state, the power of the state. That's what he did. He carried the gospel in his church. Okay, I, I was told yesterday by a, a strong practicing Catholic that you give unto Caesar what is Caesar's and you give unto the Lord what is the Lord's. Now, how, how can he reconcile? He is a man in the secular world. He's, uh, he's in, an employee of the government and he's been asked to do that isn't he just answering the call to do unto Caesar, give unto Caesar what is Caesar? Well, when it comes to killing lots of people, obviously God calls us not to do that. He is uh, directly disobeying God's call by giving Caesar his allegiance when it comes to the power of life and death. I'm certain that uh, being in the military and, and waging an immoral, unjust war of aggression is a uh, contravene to any uh, law of God and the law of the church as well. But I'm sure he would say, unfortunately he's not here today uh, to respond to what you've said, but I'm sure he would say that he was doing it for the better good of the Iraqi people, that um, they needed to get rid of the tyrant. There was um, a threat to um, many different communities in Iraq. Um, but well, what do you say to that? Uh, he would say that, but uh, as I pointed out, the Pope said it was an unjust war, and all of the Archbishops of Australia said it was an unjust war, and all Christian leading Christian theologians around the world agreed. And uh, it could not in good conscience, in my opinion, uh, think otherwise than that it was an unjust war. If he did, he would be totally warping his conscience in the same way that for so many Catholics did, in, for instance, in Nazi Germany, when they went to fight for Hitler. And they all called that uh, to defend their Today that seems absurd to us. That's what they believed and that's what they said they believed. They excused them committing mass murder as, uh, the same way that the invasion of Iraq was mass murder. Over a million people killed. The country totally devastated to this day. General Cosgrove, even if he thought he was doing the right thing then, the aftermath proved that he wasn't. He still hasn't repeated the war crimes that have been committed there. It's obvious to everyone that this is wrong. Have you spoken to any Iraqi people who have described what happened to them? I've spoken to uh, only to a good friend who was there during the invasion. 
she described in detail some of the um, scenes of massacre after the invasion, during the invasion and the bombing of Baghdad. And uh, she was also in Fallujah when they were levelling a whole city of Fallujah. And she's described the horror of some of that. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Very good. Thank you. 